every winter on the northern tip of Japan's main island. A unique weather pattern transforms the land. Siberian winds sweep in from the west, gathering up moisture as they cross the warm waters of Japan. The air then hits coastal mountains, rising, and the result is snow. And more than just flurries. It's thick, constant, and blankets much of the land. This is the story of that land. One of the snowiest places on the planet. And the people who live there. Happily enduring the daily battle against Mother Nature. Because she also gives them scenes like this. And this. A winter playground. One of the most wild, untouched regions in the world. This is Destination Tohoku. most of six prefectures that constitute a region the Japanese call Tohoku. And in wintertime, it's also the snowiest. Few places on the planet can compete with the annual snowfall here in Aomori City. Last year, it snowed over six and a half meters, more than 21 feet in this provincial capital. Roads, Homes, everything gets buried. But for the nearly 300,000 residents here, they're used to bone chilling winds and blizzards. Nothing a few layers won't warm. Julia Menatoya grew up here on the city's edge. As you can see, in the wintertime, everything is blanketed in snow. It's a constant battle every single day. A seasonal struggle, perhaps. But one that brings a calm many here eagerly await throughout the year. In Japanese, there is an expression. We say snow falls shinshin, or gently, and here it completely blankets the land. It's a winter wonderland, and it has a silent beauty. It's so beautiful. Winters in this coastal region also bring a rich bounty from the sea. Some of the best fish in all of Japan this is Furukawa, Aomori's main seafood market. Julia and her mum come here for lunch. The specialty is nokidon, a rice bowl. Customers then choose raw toppings fresh from the frigid waters off Aomori. The best season for fish in Aomori is wintertime, especially codfish, with many coming to these waters for spawning. It's so tasty. The market is popular with local residents and tourists if that is, they can get here safely. Daisuke Saito's job is to make that possible. 
pivá. This airport is on a mountain, so the weather can change all of a sudden. Sometimes we have blizzards, sudden snowstorms, and complete whiteouts with low visibility. Saito is part of the airport's snow removal team. There are 120 of them, codenamed White Impulse, running up to eight missions, as they call them, every day in winter. And just in time. ANA Flight 1852 is preparing for departure. In 24 years of this cruise operation, the airport has never delayed or canceled flights due to snow on the runway, they say. It's a tough job because you cannot make any mistakes, but it's also rewarding. When I see planes landing and taking off safely because of what we do, it makes me proud. On this day, the plane is off, on time, bound for the snowy white skies over Tohoku. Clearing is only step one. The snow has to go somewhere. Much of this precipitation originated over the warmer sea, and back into the sea it will eventually go. Trucks laden with ice dump it here every few minutes, all day, every day. Elsewhere, removing snow is futile. There's just too much. The Hakoda Mountains high above the city is one of those places. But that also draws outdoor enthusiasts like Yutaka Ono. The 68-year-old started snowshoe trekking here as a boy, no matter the weather. What I like about snow hiking is the winter scenery. Nature is beautiful, I love it. It's like a Japanese ink painting in black and white, and a world of silence. Few places in Japan are as wild and remote as this series of volcanic peaks. Getting there means driving up a corridor of snowbanks taller than the cars. For skiers, Hakoda's powder is the stuff of dreams. Some of the runs are groomed. But many more are backcountry slopes suited for only the most daring. This, is a little, this place is a little different because there aren't very many cut runs into the mountain. So it's, it's a real, real kind of choose your own adventure, find your own path, and uh, you can, uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Despite the sub-zero winds, finding warmth here isn't hard. Thermal springs bubble across the mountain. People have bathed in onsens as they're known here for centuries. They're said to have therapeutic properties. One local legend explains why. About 340 years ago, some hunters ended up here after chasing a deer. The animal was shot and injured, but somehow found a way to walk into the warm waters here, which seemed to cure the deer of its injuries, and it managed to get away. And that was the beginning of this onset. Back in the city, as night falls, the snow continues. Only the brave few remain outside. Julia meets friends at a local pub, or Izakaya. It's called the Apple Box, named for fruit this land is so famous for in the summer. On stage, a musician plays a three-string guitar common here in Tohoku. It's a traditional song, asking for tough winter nights to end. The sun will rise soon over Aomori the snow will likely continue. The 
northernmost Japanese region of Tohoku gets more snow than most places on Earth. Winters are bitter cold, but there are unique ways of keeping warm here. Like this vintage 1950s era passenger car warmed by actual stoves. Today, most stove trains are out of service. This one, however, caters to tourists. Dried squid grilled over the fire, washed down with locally produced sake. It's more like a trip through time. Just south of Aomori lies the mountainous prefecture of Iwate. Gando Lake is one of its biggest attractions. It's also known as the coldest place on Honshu, Japan's main island. The wind chill can be extreme. But that doesn't stop ice fishermen from coming every morning at dawn. Across this pontoon bridge, these floating huts are lodged in the ice. Inside, wooden slats allow access to the frigid water and wagasaki, or smelt. Most stay here all day just to catch a few dozen of this tiny fish. A popular meal in the wintertime. Popular, but not the most famous food in Iwate. Iwate is really well known for its food especially noodles, like wanko soba. Imagine a restaurant where overeating is actually encouraged. Here in Iwate's capital, it's not only a reality, it's a tradition. This is Azumaya, a 111-year-old noodle shop in the city of Morioka. Dining options have expanded in the past century, but there's only one speciality here, wanko soba. Akihito Baba is its fifth generation owner. Wanko soba is small portions of soba noodles that are served one after the other. It's the traditional food of Iwate, served during special occasions or celebrations and when we welcome outside guests. Iwate is famous for its noodles, especially soba. Buckwheat grows easily in this cold, mountainous region, Baba says. And what began as a show of hospitality, encouraging guests to eat as much as possible, has morphed into a challenge an all-out sober noodle binge. Diners down these small bowls. A waitress pours the next mouthful, then repeat. Until either you stand up or you're too full to go on. Patrons stack empty bowls like badges of honor. 100 here, 200 there. 15 of their bowls is roughly the same as a normal serving of soba, they say. Two years ago, I ate 222 bowls, but after I ate, I still had room to eat more. And that's not even half the current record. 570 bowls. This young woman, Naoko Obara, is hungry to beat it. She's a competitive speed eater, weighing just 50 kilograms. 
食べた後の気持ちは。After eating a lot, I get a similar feeling to a runner's high. I feel happy and enjoy it. な気持ちになります。The waitress cheers her on, saying, More, more. In the back, the kitchen races to keep up. Noodles are cut, dipped in a fish broth, and divided up as quickly as possible. Baba's four noodle shops go through over four tons of buckwheat flour each month. I'm happy that customers eat a lot and enjoy it, but it's true. I lose money every time someone eats a lot. On this day, Abara puts down the lid to say enough at 300 bowls. No new records at this Wanko Soba shop for now, but there's always another meal tomorrow. Japan's Tohoku region, one of the snowiest places on planet Earth. In the Yamagata prefecture, nothing is spared in the winter. A meringue like blanket of snow and frost covers everything on this mountain peak. Even the trees. The Japanese call them juyo, or snow monsters. It's not hard to see why. But this otherworldly scene doesn't last forever, which is why tourists flock to the village of Zhao Onsen each winter to catch a glimpse before summer when the bulk of this snow melts. Many are left speechless. It's impressive beyond description. It is difficult to describe this amazing scenery. I'm moved beyond words. Others come to Zhao Onsen for the skiing. Japan has some of the most famous ski resorts in the world. Some, like Nagano or Niseko, are very well known. Hideto Ito hopes to add this place to that list. Snow here is called Japao. Japan powder snow that is known around the world. The quality of snow here is dry with low humidity. It's less wet. Ito is from here and practically grew up on skis. Some children have toys. He had this mountain. Skiing gives you a feeling of real excitement and accomplishment. I love it. So much so, he made a career of it. Ito is a former professional skier on Japan's national team. Zhao Onsen's monster runs made for the perfect training ground. Back then, there were no ski lifts or cable cars. Today, there are 37 and 12 courses, the longest of which is 10 kilometers or six miles long. Then there's the village itself. Zhao Onsen offers a unique window into traditional Tohoku hospitality. You won't find big chains here. Just a few small mom-and-pop rental shops 
、何かお探しですかですけど、あのちょっと今、取材されたけど。<笑>ファミリーランレストランとサーキーバーズ。And Japanese style ryokans or guest houses. Hiroto Okazaki is the 17th generation owner of this one. If you look at the village, there are a lot of old buildings, including this hotel. We have three public bus in the village. Thermal waters here have drawn visitors to Zhao Onsen for centuries. Today, though, most come to see the frost covered trees. Snow monsters are the symbol of this town. Beyond seasonal changes in temperature, There is another threat to the town's symbol global warming. Many say it is affecting the climate here and that the frost is slowly receding to higher ground. Ito's seen it too. There are fewer ski monsters now than there were years and years ago. That's a concern. While experts race to find a solution, Ito also wants visitors to hurry too, to see the frost before it goes. It begins when the cold winds blow in from the west. The landscape transforms, becoming wild and harsh. But one people here look forward to. Because with the snow comes calm and beauty. And it only lasts so long. And no one knows what the next winter will bring in Tohoku. <laughs>